Okay. Um, my name is Ernesto. I work uh, in the Intel um, compiler group, and um, so a lot of uh, this work is um, on OpenMP. So I'm going to talk about a uh, proposed extension we'd like to uh, uh, for OpenMP to support uh, general induction. Mandatory uh, disclaimers. Okay, so um, one of our customers presented uh, to us this financial application that has a bunch of loops that have this pattern and um, seemingly this should be uh, easy to implement or sim uh, to uh, parallelize or vectorize, in this case vectorize, um, if it were not for the type of this um, X being uh, non-integral. So uh, OpenMP's linear clause is um, limited to integral types for the induction variable and um, it, and the operation is limited to addition. So if you want to express other inductions, uh, in this case is um, uh, we'll have x that the, the induction variable doesn't have to be uh, integral. If it is that case or if the user wants other type of uh, induction operations, then uh, we will not be able to uh, vectorize or parallelize the loop. So uh, we would like to be able to support uh, these customers. So um, we um, think that uh, it would be a good idea if we can extend OpenMP to support uh, more operators. Could be built-in operators or user-defined operators um, and to support more data types. Uh, so the data types of the uh, induction variable and the step expression could be uh, other than integral, including uh, user-defined types like class types, for example. So in the rest of the presentation, uh, I would uh, give an overview of what in uh, the concept of in uh, the induction and then uh, cover the, um, uh, the proposed extensions. One is a uh, induction clause, and the other one is a declared induction construct that will uh, let the user express uh, the user-defined induction operation. And then I'll conclude. So the concepts in this slide is, is pretty basic and is probably familiar to most of us. Uh, the main purpose of uh, it here is to uh, basically agree on some terminology that we'll use in the rest of the uh, presentation. So, uh, an uh, induction has an induction variable x, and um, we can uh, represent it in a recursive form where uh, the uh, value of x, uh, the entry of every loop iteration, can be computed based on the value of uh, uh, the of uh, based on each value in the previous iteration, operated on uh, with some um, a loop invariant expression S, which we call the set. So in this, um, I represents the uh, uh, loop index. In this case, it's zero normalized, so x naught is the initial value of x uh, upon entry of the loop. And if we rewrite this uh, in a non uh, uh, expand this so that um, uh, the xi at every, every at any loop iteration i uh, is basically a function of the initial value and operated uh, with the step expression i times. And um, and this operation, uh, which I denote here as a circle plus, is it could be addition, like in the original linear clause, but it could be uh, any induction operation that we want to represent. So, in cases uh, that this this operation, the the induction operation, can be re uh, reassociated in a way that the s's, the, these uh, the i uh, s terms can be collected into one expression that is non-iterative, then uh, we can call that expression, uh, uh, that operation, uh, in this case, denoted as a circle times, the collective operator. And if that 
operation is possible, then we can rewrite the induction in a closed form. So, as, as, uh, as you see in the last line, it, it could be uh, the step expression could be collected and then use that step as the, uh, the only step that you use. So, so again, like I said, it's uh, non iterative. Um, so, that is uh, uh, basically the terminology that we use uh, the inductive operator, the collective operator, and so on. Okay, so uh, and this is just for uh, the basic operations, uh, arithmetic operations. We can see that all of them can be collected, so all the all of them, uh, the closed form is uh, available. So in, for the plus and minus, the, the collective operation will be the multiplication, and for times and divides is the exponentiation. Okay, so. Uh, our first proposal is a clause, a new clause called induction, and it will have three fields: um, an ID that represents the induction operation. It could be um, one of the built-in operations, uh, plus, minus, times, divide, or a user-defined uh, operation. And uh, it is intended to be used with uh, loop type constructs like OMP4 um, or SIMD or distribute. And um, it's, uh, the second field for, for this will be a, a list of uh, induction variables. And then the last field is a step expression. Okay, so here are some examples. Uh, if you have the uh, induction ID using the plus and the uh, variables x, y, uh, and a step of one. If x, y is uh, uh, integer, then it's basically uh, the same as linear x, y. Now, if we use um, in the second example, uh, multiply as your induction operation, then we basically describing a nonlinear induction. And thirdly, uh, the user can specify uh, some induction operation through that he or she uh, defines himself using uh, the next proposal that we'll describe. So with that, then you are allowed to uh, uh, use uh, for the types of X and S, it, it could be uh, user defined like class types, for example, and they don't have to be the same. Okay, so next I will present an example using um, basically the, uh, similar to the second example, uh, I'm going to, yes? I have a couple questions at the end of your, would you be proposing to have uh, some sorts of defaults for each of the... Uh, we thought about it, um, and the problem is because of the, Operations can be different. Uh, I couldn't find a default that really makes sense. If, for example, uh, well, in terms of the syntax, if you have both the the first field as uh, 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 something you can omit, and the last thing also you can omit. Then um, I, I don't know. Uh, I actually could do that if you just leave it blank with a column. Otherwise, because the the variables are, uh, I mean, the first field could be a identifier for the operation. It will be harder to parse for the compiler. Yeah, it, yeah. Is that, Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, if we leave the column there, then, then that, that is, uh, yeah, I think that, that is, uh, uh, it's not in this slide, but I think that would be a, a, a possible idea. Just, if you leave the column there, then that means uh, it's a plus, that that could work. So basically then, you 
call it instead of using the new keyword induction to use the keyword yeah um we could yeah the yeah the the thing uh, i mean the the first um uh intention we had was to reuse linear and not invent a new clause but then it's kind of self contradictory that we're saying well it's not linear actually or, or it could be yeah so but the, those are, those are, those are details that we can uh refine it further uh, do we want to use reuse linear or come up with a new name? Okay, yeah, that that probably. But then we have to have this deal with backward compatibility. People who already have linear in their code, then maybe for some time the compiler has to start uh, still honor that clause for some time. Data is deprecated, and the next major version after that is removed. I see. Okay, so we need some time for people to transition. That's, that's a good idea. Okay, so here's an example using um, uh, induction in a nonlinear fashion. So in this case, uh, in this example, we're trying to evaluate a polynomial. So for given um, value of the, the variable x, we want to basically compute the constant term plus uh, a coefficient times x plus a coefficient times x squared and so forth. And uh, so in this example, uh, the induction variable is actually the powers of x. So x to the i. So that is our induction variable. And the step is basically the the value that you assign to x at which the polynomial will be evaluated. So, um, and of course the, the actual value of the polynomial is accumulated through a reduction, in this case into the reduction variable value, and then at every iteration of this loop, the, uh, the induction clause will compute the, or express the uh, power of x first. Okay, so this is just uh, one, um, I think it's, it's a nice small example that shows what other uh, induction operations we can uh, be using in uh, real application. Uh, S is always loop invariant in any induction. So, so yes, it, it is constant with respect to this, this loop. Pardon me? I'm just trying to figure out what the impact of having the <coughs> assignment of x i in this uh, structure block instead of this expression. Uh, fine, you mean if x is. So x i start to go test is in your structure block and Oh, x, x i starts as a, as a 1. Is that the... No, what I mean is, if you had i plus plus comma x i star equals s. Right? Or, I plus plus... I, I write the well, but you have to recognize, the compiler has to recognize the expression is in the loop body and in the structure block and it has to eliminate it. And what if it's not consistent with the... Uh, yeah, that's a new system. I take your point. I mean, I, I think because normally you basically abide the induction operation, right? Because it's good. But you always have the... But you... I mean, it's no different than a reduction. You're just saying it has to. No, because in a reduction, you still perform the operations on the private copy. And here, you're, here you're you would not, or, or would you? Uh, but yes, the, I don't see what we're going to get performance of. Yes. Yeah. So the. I'll have to explain that first. Yeah, the. Um, for induction, just like linear, is also operated on a private copy. Right, but the linear operation is included in a loop. 
uh, the, uh, well, the linear, uh, the linear induction variable or the linear variable does not have to be the loop variable, right? It could be, it could be a, another uh, variable that the user within the loop uh, does its own induction. Like, for example, you can say. So actually, it's probably um, I have another example eventually with um, with some pseudo code of the code gen that probably will give you. Um, okay, so and if we want to go beyond um, these built-in types and operators, then uh, we would like to be able to express user-defined um, uh, induction operations where the user will specify uh, the type of the induction variable, the type of the spec step expression, and uh, express what the inductive operator and possibly what the collective operators are. If the collective operator is uh, specified, then actually uh, the compiler can generate better code because then you can uh, you compute the initial value of the induction variables at the beginning of each thread or at the, the beginning of the simile link um, by using a closed form and compute it in constant time. And so the proposal to, um, to, de to describe this is similar to the existing uh, declare reduction construct in the syntax. So as a recap, here's um, uh, the syntax for uh, declared reduction. We can see there's a reduction ID in the first field, a list of types for the reduction variables, then an expression called the combiner that will express how these partial results are combined. And then to the specification of the combiner uses special variables, uh, OMP in, OMP out, to represent the uh, reduction variable. So we'll use a similar mechanism in our declare induction. And then there's an optional uh, initializer uh, part in the declare uh, reduction. So similarly in the uh, uh, declare induction, we'll have a, uh, an optional part for the collector. So here's what it looks like. You have, uh, this syntax is uh, for C, but uh, for Fortran is, is the same. You just change the OMP with uh, bang dollar sign OMP. Okay, uh, so the first field is an induction ID, then uh, a type specifying the induction variables, a type for the step expression, and then the inductor expression that will uh, show what this uh, inductive operation is. And uh, the special variables we'll use is OMP out to represent the induction variable and OMP step to represent the step. Okay, so in uh, C++ you can have an overloaded plus and then you just say OMP out equals OMP out plus OMP step. That, that could be one way to express it. Uh, in C, of course, you don't have overloading, so you can just have a function called there um, to to show how, how this is done. Um, then if the collective operation is possible for that inductive operation, then uh, you can express it uh, using the special uh, variable OMP step to represent uh, the step expression and OMP index to represent that I, the loop iteration. And again, the, uh, if you have uh, the product that at the time is um, overloaded in your class, then you can say OMP step equals OMP step times OMP index. And then that will be your uh, collective step. So combining both, then you have the closed form. In, uh, use the collector to compute the collective step first and then use that as your step. So combine that with the initial value of x using the inductive uh, operator. Okay, so here I have an example uh, where this could be used in parallelization. Uh, say A is the class for my induction variable, uh, S is the class for my step. Then uh, the declare induction construct will look like the first 
field here is OP is my um, the ID I use for this operation, and then the type specifiers A and S, and then as uh, the fourth field uh, I have uh, one PL equals one PL plus one P step, where this plus is overloaded for A and S for this facet, and uh, assuming that this operation it, it, uh, allows a collector, then I can specify collector in this manner as well. Again, the, uh, the times here is overloaded for the, the step type and the integral type for the index. And then so I can uh, express my parallel for loop with an induction clause using OP and then specify uh, little a and little s as my uh, induction variable and the step expression. And I expect the compiler to generate uh, code for it by using, since I specified the collector, uh, the, the compiler should be able to find the initial uh, value of a for every thread using a closed form. So the first step is our front end will generate the inductor and collector routines, uh, which will be involved from the back end. And then the OMP out, OMP step, OMP step, OMP index become the formal parameters of these routines. And then the, the front end will look at the class of A and S and then find what the overloading um, the, the, uh, for the step plus and then multiply R and then use that in, in, in this routine. So once this is available, then uh, the compiler backend will generate a thread at code. So the first thing, of course, is to call the runtime to obtain the lower bound and upper bound for each threaded loop. And then uh, for each threaded loop, then we will uh, basically privatize the induction variable and uh, we will create a variable for the sub expression as well. So this will be basically it's similar to the first private semantics, right? We'll privatize it and then copy construct them. Uh, then, it, then we, since the collector and doctor routines are already generated by the uh, front end, the back end will use them, and then uh, the first line, the collector line, will compute the uh, the collective step. Ex that step in of that thread using uh, the lower bound of the thread. So, so basically, it's s times i, where that i is the lower bound, right? So that that would be the initial one for each thread, and then use that using the inductor to combine with the, uh, the induction variable. The, uh, the induction variable, because the, the initial value of a is uh, coming in from the copy construction. And then this uh, S, which is computed with a collector, is your collective S, and then combine, then you have the closed form. So with that, then the loop will proceed uh, uh, normally. So basically, um, other than the privatization semantics where A is replaced and S is replaced, the loop is, is uh, the body of the loop is unchanged versus other threaded uh, code. And after the loop, then, uh, just like with linear, with induction, you have to copy out the the um, the last value of a. So this is similar to the last private semantics. So that is the cogen for threadization, and for vectorization is basically uh, in terms of specifying it is the same. Um, the declare induction. This is the same as the previous slide. The only thing here is that instead of Pragma MP parallel 4, now it's Pragma MP simply. But other than that, the, the specification is the same. And of course, the code generation will be different because this is for vectorization. So um, it's basically uh, the vectorizer will um, generate um, a vector form of A and S and then propagate uh, or, or populate it with A and S for all these vector elements. And then, so that's the first step. Then the second step, uh, we will um, compute the vector of A for basically the initial value of A for each single lane uh, using the vector form of the collector and inductor. 
and then uh, we will have to also produce a vector form of the step expression which is uh, uh, scaled by uh, the vector length so that is also computed this time using the, the scalar collector and then with that then uh, unlike the loop body of that uh, the thread uh, case the loop body here for the vectorized case uh, still be um, just like in other vectorization uh, examples they, it, uh, the scalars are uh, converted to vector forms and then uh, the function call is uh, also a vector form and then the copy out uh, uh, copying out the value of the last uh, vector element to A is, is similar. Okay, so that would be uh, how um, the uh, vectorization will happen. So uh, currently um, we have implemented uh, in the C compiler the front end is already prototyped and uh, so we have some uh, results out of that. Uh, the intermediate language representation for these uh, clauses are done. Uh, the actual backend uh, implementation of parallelizer and the vectorizer, vectorizer are still in progress. Um, uh, in Fortran, the front end, uh, they agree to uh, do this at some point, but they haven't given us uh, a time. So I can only put uh, to be done here. Uh, the backend is the same as, as the, the C, C++ compiler backend, so that, that is the uh, same status. And there is no uh, need to change the runtime to support uh, this new feature. So, uh, so to summarize, um, we have seen reapplications that demand um, these extensions. And with these proposed extensions, then we can support more operations and more data types uh, in induction relations, uh, including user-defined uh, operations and data types. And we presented some examples. Thank you. So, so the real point here is that you have to conductorize. Pardon me. Oh, uh, yes. Multiplication. Well, you know, I you would have done it yeah. Right? You could have done exactly what he did on the parallel loop by hand today, but now you can do it. So you can parallelize and vectorize more loops by hand. Well, you can do the vectorization by hand too. So this is just in fact a chart. Yeah, I know. I understand that. Um, so, so the interesting thing, Ernesto, is this relates to an issue that came up in. Uh, so what, what values does the um, induction, the, the, the loop control variable have in, in, in a parallel loop? Uh, let me see if I understand your question. You're, you're asking if the... I, I'm asking what does the specification require of the loop control variable currently? Nothing. That I can. Uh, there is no that regulation. Yes, yes. The, the canonical loop form is there. But what happens to the LCD? Not, we have to state what the values are. Yeah. The, the, the well, we can go back to the linear. It, even with a linear clause, there there is no relation between. Is that we have now, but we have a, a, uh, so, so we have a whole the loop control variable. We don't say anything about the values. We have a whole with the linear uh, description because you are assuming that, that the in any operation on, on the deduction variable or a write is replaced by the um, simple calculation that can happen up front. Alright? Uh, and, and doing the same thing with the induction variable. But currently with linear, we do not say that you rely on anything. All we say is that the value of the linear variable at the beginning of the iteration has that value. So, in fact, um, you shouldn't be operating on the linear variable unless you want to do operations that are discarded after the iteration. Uh, 
my understanding of the linear uh, clause is uh, the linear variables are known at the beginning of each uh, loop but also you you can uh, have because of its specification you know it's uh, how to optimize it when the loop is say parallelized or uh, vectorized by knowing the uh, value of that uh, variable at every iteration and uh, also linear implies that it is privatized so you can operate on it directly uh, uh, but it's not just privatized. It's, it's what I'm saying is that as a compiler, you're assuming that the operations that led to the variable being linear are aligned. So that you have equivalent, so you have zero equivalency. No, 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 no. I, I, the, there is no serial equivalence necessarily, right? What I'm saying is, so, so you write a simple loop with the linear variable, right? And you have. In, in, in your loop, you say a equals a plus three. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, that a is not your LTV, right? Or, or do you not bother to generate it because you generated it by saying that a equals. Why do you care? Because the spec doesn't say what it's doing. It's just like reduction. The are not the no, no, no. If I print the value of i, it must have the value of what i should be at that point. The spec did not say, well, the language doesn't say. You know, it does like language. No, we have, look, Larry, if you induct the loop variable in a loop, has a very low number. If you're saying, I know what it will print. You're making an assumption. I am not. We, we, if I print it, then if you're telling me that if I print I and you can print me, no, then I just you broke so you broken you broken the underlying language, right? But we, we changed the underlying language by getting it over to C. We don't. Everything else we state this is what it has. I think it's a philosophical discussion with no, no. Well, here it actually has that. I think it has because on on linear, either you're abiding the value no. or you said it doesn't matter as long as you get the value. No, it doesn't matter because if, if, if I go and set it to a equals uh, a zero plus three times i, all right. At the beginning of the iteration, I do some calculations, and then I have the a equals a plus three. Well, then you are right. then you get to the and one of them are extended on a that I should actually get a zero plus sure. three times i plus four. Sure. So you're placing some restriction on the kinds of assignments you can make to a. No, I'm saying that you have to state whether you abide it or whether you have a restriction. I'm sort of see what you're saying, but I don't think it's... Fortunately, I'm the one trying to I'll shut You see what I mean, Michael? Yeah. Your company introduced this kind of, this uh, clause, and it's broken horrible. <laughs> I think what you're I'm saying... saying I'm looking forward to your video. Do we have more time for Yes. The, the the very first slide about the motivation that, that is that is um, feedback from our customers saying that hey I, I cannot do this with OpenMP but this looks so simple why can't you just 
you don't do this for us. Uh, conceptually, yes, but to actually verify, verify, we need to finish our compiler implementation, right? But uh, but you 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 could see that if you um, if you manually do this, then you will be able to vectorize this loop or parallelize if if that is the choice. Pardon? I would imagine so. Yeah, this is this is what what that is the motivation for for this work. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't want to define the set of things that every place I use this operator. Yeah, uh, those are two things. Uh, you do need to have that defined in your class. Yeah, right? It's, it's defined there. Why I need to define it here? Because. When I use this operator, it, it, it is a source code and it's already there. Right. Uh, the reason is uh, you need to tell the compiler where, which one to look at. Um, for example, Let's uh, raise your hand. Anyway, remember the slide where I had um, the th that declare induction. The problem is at the actual use of your uh, of, of your um, uh, induction clock. How do you specify that operation? So I mean, okay. <laughs> For those overloading, I basically think that uh, I'm thinking about using SIMD, not the, the parallel code. Mm -hmm. In SIMD, basically, you have a complicated uh, uh, code doing of, of operate overlay, uh, operator overloading. That basically you don't think that is uh, because it's too complicated. The uh, compiler can't handle. Then it's, it's simple. It's basically an inline function, and the compiler directly copies the inline there to the inline business and keep all the plain old types of operations. Uh, well, actually, let's go back to the previous statement. Uh, even with overloaded uh, operators, uh, the compiler can generate the vector version of those uh, automatically when you when you declare these as uh, with the the, the SIMD, declare SIMD. Do I get the the performance depends on how big a portion of that is within your code. Because definitely that will have uh, overheads, right? But if that is not, if your code is not dominated by that, then by being able to vectorize or parallelize your loop, you can still gain. Because you don't want to be blocked by not being able to do one thing, if that is just one small thing of a big loop that has many other things that can be vectorized, then uh, paying the overhead will, will still be uh, beneficial. Uh, we, we can, yeah. Okay. Yes. One question. Yeah, I was just wondering for the for the form uh, for the inductive stuff, and if I recall correctly, it, it had to be kind of in a simplified form that you could you know, determine for each index, each value of the of the iteration, like what the uh, overall impact of the induction step would be. I was just wondering if you took that line and you moved it above the work function approaches and you reduced the, the inductive step by one, would you need to add the extra functionality 
here? Like, would the, would the programmer just be able to move that line up to the top of the loop? Uh, yes. Um, and then when you have parallel four, you would, you would automatically know the start that you could do with partition the loop. You would automatically know as soon as you started what the value of that is supposed to be. Yes, uh, actually, um, the actual placement of where you increment in the in the uh, loop that is that is part of the user code. So, uh, for parallelization, for example, all the compiler does is the uh, initializing of that variable at the beginning of every thread, and then the copy out. What is in the body, the compiler doesn't even touch. In other words, if you lie to the compiler and say a equals a plus something else that is not a step, the, the, the compiler would just believe that and generate wrong code. So the, the, it's just similar to uh, reduction. If you don't put a real valid reduction uh, uh, you know, operation in there, the compiler is going to still combine what it thinks are the partial results, but there is no, no check. For, for the body. So, so yeah, basically the, the short answer is that you can put anything in the body. Yeah. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you.